Okay, everyone, welcome back to the show. We've got a, a very exciting video today. I mean, just very exciting. It's, uh, your, 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 your pulse is gonna race when we start talking about this subject today. And that's about how to price your house. I mean, is that not the most exciting thing you've ever heard? Um, he's excited. You're excited, right? Yeah, he's excited. He, he's, he's super pumped, everyone. So let's, let's get into this bad boy. So this is, this is a very common thing that people wanna know, which is, hey, I'm looking to sell my house. How should I price this thing? Because there's really three ways to go about it. One is to pr price it low. One is to price it high. The third option is to just price it at what it's actually worth. Now, you might tell from my tone that it's pretty obvious to me which of these is the appropriate route. But let's break it down a little bit and I'll tell you why I'm right. Okay, so the first thing is people want to do this strategy. Strategy, man. Sometimes, guys, your words just you do you do your best, but your words just just flub. One strategy is to price your house low and then let the market of buyers bid it up. I'm not a fan of this strategy. Okay, so let's just say your house is worth three hundred thousand dollars, and you go, hey, look, we're gonna price it at two eighty, two ninety, and we're gonna create a bidding war. Is that a term? That's a hot topic term, right? We're gonna create a bidding war, right? We're gonna, people are gonna be bidding on this house and it's, we get 20 offers and we're gonna drive up the price. Okay, well, here's the problem with that. Actually, I'll, I'll break down the problem in a minute. Strategy number two is let's price the house high knowing that we're not gonna get that number, but it's still gonna settle down to a price that's a, above what we would have hoped to get of it actually being worth. To me, the, it sounds like the dumbest strategy in the world, but I'll break down why that's also dumb. The third strategy is pretty straightforward, which is, well, let's do our research and let's uh, figure out what the house is actually worth according to an appraiser, which should be the end of the entire video, according to an appraiser, and let's price it at that. So let's go one by one. What are the problems with these scenarios? So price it low and then sell it high. All right, here's the problem with that. One, there's no guarantee that's actually gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so you're playing with fire. You say, okay, our house is worth 300, let's price it at 280. Well, what if it doesn't get bid up and then the best offer you get at 290 and you're like, shit, house is worth 300, but we're only getting offers at 290. Even if the bank says it's worth 300, if a buyer's only willing to pay 290, well, guess what? It's worth 290, right? Because no one's willing to give you more than that. So you kind of, I just don't think it's a good strategy. The other thing that could happen is, yeah, they might bid it up. So let's say they bid it up to 320, okay? Just, just stay with me for a second here. They bid it up to, to 320. The only thing that matters is those offers that are going above your listing price the terms of the offers are critical because if they are not guaranteeing that they can cover the difference between the appraisal price and the the offer price, you know, what they are offering on your house, that's what really matters. Okay, so I, I tell our guys all the time. When I say our guys, by the way, 1911 Syndicate, that's my that's my uh, uh, company and we help out people with, you know, buy and sell and real estate, all that kind of good stuff. We'll have it linked below. You can go there and, and hit us up if you ever need anything. Shameless plug. But so I tell our guys all the time, look, if a house is listed at 300 and because it's a competitive market right now, you want to go up to 320. Well, you need to show them that you're serious about the 320 because guess what? Any asshole can say your house is worth 300, but I'll give you 400 for it. These are just words. These are just words. These, these mean nothing. How do I know that you can cover 400 grand if it, the bank says it's actually worth 300? And if they're like, well, let's just wait and see. No, but no, let's not just wait and see. Like, I need to know that you're serious. So I tell our guys, look, the house is worth 300 and we're going to 320. I am recommending that we submit an appraisal addendum that says, look, as long as the house appraises for the 300 that they have it listed at, right? We're gonna assume they've done their due diligence and their homework to know that it is actually worth 300. If we're gonna offer 320, hey, look, I'm gonna put a little caveat in there that says, look, as long as it appraises at your 300, if it doesn't appraise for the 320, we'll cover whatever the gap is, 
right? And this is a video we'll probably make later down the road on, on appraisal addendums, but essentially what you're doing is giving the sellers a guaranteed like, yeah, you're gonna get your 320 out of it, right? Because if it appraises at 310, the bank says we're only gonna loan you 310, but we offered 320, cool, you gotta cover that $10,000 in cash at closing. I know what I just said was like a quick thing and I probably lost some people, but it's a different video for a different day, right? The point of this is, look, if you start your house low and you expect it to go high, well, what matters is the offers, how they're written. Are they guaranteeing the price over the listing price that they are offering? I just think it's a, I just think it's a dumb strategy. Like just price the house what it's worth. So the other thing of course is, well, let's list it high, knowing that let's list it at 320, knowing that it's worth 300 because maybe we'll actually get 312 for it, even though it's only worth 300. Again, the, a giant problem with this is, look, most houses that sit on the market in a seller's market, if they sit on the market for longer than normal, let's say if I see a house in Salt Lake that's been for sale for two weeks, I'm like, okay, there's a problem here. Frequently, that problem is you overpriced your house. So no one's paying attention to the house because they know you're overpriced it. So they think you're unrealistic, right? So basically it's a, it's like a suicide, but it's straight kamikaze shit. If you say, hey, look, let's price a $300,000 house at 320, cool. You probably just killed your traffic on your house. And the most important time to have traffic on your house is when it first goes live. That first 10 day window, like that's the window for us to sell it. If the first 10 days, no one's coming because your house is listed too high, you just really put yourself in a pinch. And guess what? Now buyers are looking at your house and they're going, ooh, that one's been around for two weeks. That should have sold in three days. It's been around for two weeks. And guess what? You know what they smell? Blood in the water. And so they're gonna come in and they're gonna start making some sharky offers. Even if the sharky offer is just what the house is actually worth, why wouldn't you have just priced it what it's actually worth and just go get that number? So look, guys, the clear strategy, and this is what I always tell our guys, I don't have a listing presentation. If you ever sell your house and you you talk to an agent, you say, hey, uh, I'd like you to, at least I'd like to interview you to, to list your house, um, you're going to get hit with some fancy PowerPoint presentations about what they're going to do with social media marketing, and they're going to it's it's gonna be ridiculous, guys. It's gonna be the most painful meeting of your life. What I do in these meetings is very different. I don't have a listing presentation. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say, hey, look, I did all the homework on the house, right? And what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at all the recent sales that are the comparable sales that an appraiser is gonna look at. You're gonna look at exactly the same stuff that a, an appraiser and the other agents are gonna look at because I want you to see exactly what it is that I'm seeing. So comparable sale number one, your house has 1,700 square foot. This, this house has 650 square foot. They were built roughly the same year, roughly the same size lot, and this is what it sold for. We're gonna price your house based on data that I know an appraiser, or, or at least overwhelmingly good odds say an appraiser is gonna say, yes, that house is worth what you're offering it for. So if we list your $300,000 house at 300,000 and if someone wants to make an offer at 310, cool. Like I'm confident it's gonna appraise at 300. If you wanna offer 310, cool. You better guarantee that 310 because I don't see it going for 310. So if you want it at 310, cool. Guarantee me that 10 G's over what I listed at. So going a little bit down the rabbit hole as I, as I like to say on this show, but I think you guys get the point. Um, these notions of let's list it high or let's list it low with the bidding war, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. And I know some agents will dispute me on this and that's fine. We all get to have our opinions on this. I'm not the end all be all of correct information on all things real estate. I'm just telling you the strategy is fundamentally flawed. Like it just is, okay? So if you're watching this and hey, over the next whatever time period, you're planning to sell your house, make an agent show you what your house is worth, list your house at that price. Relatively straightforward. And you know what? It's a pretty bulletproof strategy where you're probably not gonna get screwed out of any money on it, okay? So that's my two cents today, everyone. I can run a little bit hot in video sometimes, okay? I've got some Irish blood. Um, I need to do one of those genealogy tests. I think I feel like I'm like 100, per like 98% Irish mixed with like 2% like fiery devil Satan or something, because I just run a little bit hot sometimes, right? So, um, you know, he 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 runs hot, but we both have a chill side as well. So we're both very chill people, 
but we also run a little bit hot, okay? So if I run hot in videos sometimes, you just gotta understand, it's from a place of love, everyone. So we're glad you're here. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, get your pets spayed and neutered. You know, basic stuff, everyone. Do what Bob Barker would want you to do. And um, if you need real estate help, you can go to 1911syndicate.com. We, um, we have a lot of clients from the military, law enforcement, uh, you know, veteran community, things like that. Um, but we, we, we help anyone as long as you're a cool person, you know, as long as you're cool and you're, you know, decent human being, we'd, uh, we'd love to help you out. So you can go there and, um, that's that everyone. I hope everyone has a great weekend and, uh, I hope you're getting some value out of this channel. Cheers.